It is time to call the meeting to order. Sandy, would you call roll call, please? Councilman Gurney? Here. Frederick? Here. Pearl Hart? Here. Hanson? Here. Houston? Here. Good evening, everyone. Um, I invite you to make comments or ask questions on the items on the agenda as they appear. Or item number four is for the citizens to address items that are not on the agenda. Welcome and thank you for being here. We will continue with consent of agenda. Item number two, A, approval of agenda, B, approval of the minutes of the November 28, 2011 council meeting, and C, claims. Um, does anyone have any questions or would like to make any comments on A or C? I'll make a motion to the consent of agenda A through C. Second. Second. Um, consent of agenda A through C. Motion has been made and seconded to approve. Would you call for a vote, please? Councilman Frederick? Yes. Frohart? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Booster? Yes. Branny? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item number three is projects A. Wastewater treatment plant projects. Number one is discussion of pump station instrumentation options. Is this one you'd like Darren to speak to us? Yeah. Okay, Darren Jenkins is here to visit with us about that. Thanks. Uh, if, it, uh, if it works for you folks, maybe I'll give you <clears throat> excuse me. No problem over there, Mr. Okay. Bell. Um, give you a 30 second update of where we're at on the project. Okay. Basically, the project as the original contract is complete. We're working through now punch list items and helping the guys at the plant get everything started up and operating as it should. <clears throat> Every day I think we have a little bit closer. The other day we did have a, an air handling unit that had some ice problems and we had to adjust, make a few adjustments on that. It'll continue to happen for a while. Um, was that in the old grit room? Is that, that yeah, it was out there in the headworks. And okay. one of the... Uh, <laughs> one of, did you want to help? Might, might as well keep you going here. Uh, these things have a preheat function on them so that when they start drawing in cold air uh, that we don't freeze up. Well, it turns out the preheater was set for 34 degrees and seems like it works a lot better at closer to 40 degrees. So that was the problem. We had to get the guys out here and check it out. Essentially, the project is about complete other than making sure all the startup is like it should be and going through all the programming checks. They've been operating for, well, let's call it several months with all, almost all the new project, project stuff in place. Well, that leads me to probably the last, or one of the last things that we need to talk about. A few months ago, <coughs> you had asked me, as a council, if we could get you a cost for instrumenting the, the pump stations. And I think, Nick, you had actually asked for it um, specifically on a few items. And uh, I do have that. Does everyone have that in their packet mm -hmm. from Erickson and Automatic Systems? Well, essentially, and I'll be glad to answer in as much detail as you like what we've got here. We have really four options. Do nothing, just leave them the way they are. They've been this way forever. Um, or one of the three options that these folks have, pro have <coughs> proposed this ranges from very, very basic to really pretty highly instrumented. And I really don't have a strong um, recommendation on any of them. It really is up to the council if you wish to, to do any of these. Um, it's nice. It would be handy. It would be good for the operators. And it would be good for operation. But ultimately, I... Know, it's, is there any narrow banding concerns with the radio? There should not be. Radio should be compliant. Uh, <clears throat> um, option number one is a uh, compliant system that would ultimately end up with an antenna down here at the courthouse. If you're aware of that big tall antenna down there, but we would need to get permission to, to get on that. Um, that, in, that radio, and I think maybe Nick, one of the questions you had is, what kind of a radio is this and how does it work? This is a military encryption radio. And so it's a fairly sophisticated 
pretty high-end piece of technology. Why would we use that? Well, part of the reason we would use it is to avoid other people interfering with it, because you would actually have a, a band of your own that is really uh, pretty highly secure. And uh, the other part of that is Homeland Security has had a lot of, a lot of concerns about people being able to tap in or to disrupt some of these signals. Um, there's a report in Houston, Texas or somewhere down there a week or two ago I got that apparently someone had hacked into a system down there. Now, if they hack into the one in Sac City and turn down the pump station, probably no one will get out of bed and go down and look at it. So that's something to consider. If we went with an uh, option like that, would we need to get a new license frequency for that purpose? It probably would be, yes. Um, in that option, <clears throat> we would need to get probably license on that that uh, frequency. We would need to, get, need to get permission to be on that tower. So why would you want to do this? Well, this one uh, probably for today is pretty fancy. It uh, allows Dwayne to see how much water is in the wet wells, which is a good thing because then he knows that the pumps are running. It every day gives him a tally of how many hours the pump pumps ran overnight. In the last 24 hours, it trends how much the pump's pumped, which is a good thing. The, uh, the, the best thing about it though, <coughs> is that it is set up to serve about five miles around town. So if, let's say, the water department needed to have SCADA access to run from the water treatment plant to their well field, they could use this and piggyback on it. That's a good thing. Um, if down the road you decided that Maybe you're on duty personnel, maybe there's one of them, and they need to have a SCADA system at their house so they can track stuff. This can do it. I mean, you'd have to add some things to it you know, as far as maybe a little hardware and some programming. But this one's probably more of an investment. Um, but it is a lot fancier, and it is a lot more expensive. <clears throat> Much more expensive to upkeep? I would say about the same for upkeep. Um, Probably not a lot to be, not to, a lot to be done to them. Um, if you want, maybe I'll flip through the the items, and then you can kind of. I'm sure questions will come up, and you'll wonder what. Would we have a tower rent, monthly tower rent, if we put that on? I would hope not. That's one thing I did not ask, and we have not contacted the county to see if we could get on that tower. It appears there's space up there. And generally, they've always most counties have been pretty good about it. But I think it's a question worth asking if you do decide you want to look into that. And that will come up in the next couple of them. Because in option number two, we have about the same features. What we don't have is the ability to expand into like the water plant or anything else. It just services the pump station, the north station, and the one at the golf course. That's it. It's a hard line. And it's, it's run over the internet. And we have to plow in phone line. Now, the downside, you got to pay a phone line bill. And that's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 a month for each one of those two stations. So if you did have to pay rent on a tower or contribute to their electric cost, which should be pretty minimal, you know, 10 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month for electricity probably looks pretty good when compared with the uh, cost of running an internet. Feature-wise, like uh, monitoring-wise, it's about the same as item number one. It monitors pump run and things like that. Um, we would have to get permission to get the phone lines in the ground. I did work with Frontier, and Frontier said that if you buy the phone service, they'll plow in the cable for no money. That's, that's a good deal. The good thing is the one up here on the north end of town is pretty easy because it's right pretty close to a city street and close to a phone pedestal. I don't know how, do any of you know where the one at the golf course is? Yeah, it's down in the back. That one's better. That one's not so easy. <clears throat> and quite honestly, we need to take a phone line across the golf course. And probably, <laughs> John's smiling. <laughs> yeah, right. We would have to find a path to get there. And we would have to plow in a phone across that golf course. Hopefully they would let that happen. Uh, generally, when they plow cable, it's not too big of a deal. It's usually a slit, but it does screw up the grass. You know, I mean, you're running heavy machinery across there. I don't 
think it's the grasses is concerned and be all the, the lines and the water lines that are. I the think you're right. Lines. And they've got a lot of stuff on there. <coughs> and the computer is, is right up above that. Gotcha. So there'll be some things out there. Um, so that brings us to option three. And there's two, two ways to get number three. Number three is just basically an alarm dialer. And all it uses is a, is a couple of floats. If the low float gets low and trips, it calls going on the phone. If the high float gets high and trips, it calls going on the phone. That's really all it does. It tells you it's either high or it's out of water. One of the two. Which, which does indicate what's going on. If there's a plug in the station and the pump pumps it down, something's wrong. That has two ways to get there. One is to do it with a landline. And that's the one that's about $21,000. Now, you're still paying a phone bill. And instead of getting, getting an internet capable line across the golf course, we have to get a phone line across there. So, for all intents and purposes, it's still the same thing. We're still plowing in a cable. This is also probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $35 to $50 a month per station because you've got to pay the phone bill. The third way to do it, and that's the second option, three, is to do it with a cell phone. Uh, they do have cell phone capability to do the same features, but it's going to call up to the cell phone tower. That requires some kind of a mast because it's so low down there at the golf course that we're probably going to have trouble hitting the cell phone tower. So they'll put a power pole on the ground essentially with an antenna on it. Basic instrumentation. It's either good or it's not. And we'll call Dwayne and tell him that. So there's the, the nutshell of three possible ways to do it. Or fourth is to not do anything at all. And it really is up to your option whether you do it. If we decide that you want to do it, I think it's time we do it because we're about done with the project. And if you're going to do it in the project, you're about running down on time. <coughs> Doesn't mean you can't do it by yourself later, though. Yeah? Did you get a hold and contact any of those people that I gave you? I did. I did talk to um, a number of, of different hardware people, and I talked to, um, to automatic systems. And there's a couple of things that we got to keep in mind here. If we spend money out of, the, out of this project, we have to be ARA compliant. That's a big deal. And that's, I think we're headed with why does it cost so much to do this versus monitoring an animal confinement or something like that. Is that correct? Yeah, because I know right now that I can have a turkey barn sitting there, and I can find out in Newell or Storm Lake how much water yep. is getting used per minute, how much feed they're eating per minute, yep. how much feed is left in those bulk bins out there, right. and it's all automatic call, and it is a fraction of these costs. Right. And that goes back to the military encryption radio, very expensive, and it's got to be ARA compliant, which means there's about that much paperwork that says we paid the electricians a certain wage and the, the stuff was all bought in America and a lot That's of That's because it's done with the project. Exactly. Exactly. If you don't do it with this project, we could save a lot of money. You could potentially save some money. That's right. I don't know exactly how much, but you could. Very possible. Um, so I'm looking at these costs. I'm going. Mm -hmm. Good grief. And, and part of it you may not be able to save because the DNR <coughs> is going to tell you probably uh, here's the minimum amount of encryption you're going to have on your radio system. I can't tell you what well, that number is. Phone lines. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And you're, you're right. Um, there's just so many hoops to jump through when you go through government operation that that's where a lot of this comes from. So, short answer, Nick, you're right. There probably is somebody to be saved. Now, the disadvantage is you got to come up with the cash to do it. The one advantage we have here is, if you recall, we had about $100,000 set aside for things that we didn't know about. We still have a few of those probably to deal with because we dug up some pipes and things, but we're going to deal with that as we close out the project. As of the other day, we had, of course I didn't bring it in here, I think we had about $30,000 left 
roughly in that bank account. That doesn't mean you have to spend the bank account. Does that and include the fence? That does not include the fence. So you've already spent some of the bank. Yeah. Um, so that's something to be considered. Um, and you are borrowing that money, which means that you're going to be paying for it for the next 30 years or 20 years, whatever the whatever the loan uh, agreement was. So, something to keep in the back of our head. How much was that fence going to be? <coughs> fence was not a part of the project. We did not do it as a part of the project. We're not using that money out of that project no. for the fence. No. So we still have the thirty thousand left, right? Or approximate. And it doesn't mean you can't overdo the thirty. You have you actually have a loan that is higher than what the plant has cost. Uh, so you, they do have money for you, but again, it doesn't mean you have to buy it. You just bought yourself a new tractor and it costs less than you told your banker you thought it was going to, but that doesn't mean you have to add the front wheel assist on to it, right? So it's, it's really up to you folks as to whether you do it or not. Do you have quest more questions for Darren about it? Okay, you said that you had no strong feeling one way or the other for all the options. Did that no strong feeling include doing nothing, in other words, or would you really suggest doing something? I would suggest you do something, whether it's today or in the near future after you get this project closed. Why is that the case? Well, you've got a pump station down over the hill, and it's hard to get to. And if, for example, someday a pump failed and you spill the wastewater into a creek, and nobody knows about it, the DNR can come to you and say, well, you owe us X dollars a day because you've been dumping your wastewater in the creek. What um, have we had up till now? What's that? What have we had for a long system up till now? Uh, nothing. And it cost us how much? Probably not very much. And that's my whole, my whole thing. Now, that being said, the DNR has become much more um, vigilant about those kind of things. In the past, they kind of said, oh, it happened, don't, don't worry about it. Today, I don't know that that would happen. So that's something to keep in the back of your head. Are they going to come after you and take away $10,000 a day? I don't know. They could. They probably wouldn't. Um, you know, if you're doing your best. So the good thing about it, although it doesn't pre prevent that, it does give somebody an indication, gee whiz, something has failed. We have a high level alarm, we need to get out there and look. And rather than running for a couple of days, you probably know in a matter of a couple of hours. So, it is the add-on capability of option number one, is that, a, is that a significant thing to consider? I think it is, uh, mostly from the standpoint that at some point, probably your system is going to be highly operated by computers, both the water side and the wastewater side. And as you know, it gets harder and harder to have the number of personnel that we always used to have. The good thing <coughs> is maybe you can give have one duty person on a weekend instead of two. And that duty person could maybe do both sides because now they it all reports to the same place. The good thing being that the water guys and the wastewater guys maybe get a weekend off now and then. That'd be an advantage. And the, and the number one would eventually give you that capability. It also gives you the capability to add your well field and your water towers and other things. So that's something to think about. Is it $28,000 worth? I don't know. Maybe. It is nice, and, it, and most folks are trending toward that ultimate goal, you know, being able to run things electronically. Does that make it right? No. just makes it the way they're doing it today. And, and we don't have a monthly fee, uh, you know, telephone or anything else along with that other than perhaps the maintenance of 
That's so correct. If the, if the county came along and said, hey, we want 20 bucks a month for the electricity that you're using, you might have to add that in. You, you would have the licensing fee if yeah. five years? I think it's every five years. Yeah. <coughs> so. Any further questions for Darren? The time frame to act? You probably need to do it soon. What does that mean? Um, if you wanted to contemplate it for another week or two, that's probably okay, but I wouldn't go too much longer because we're about to the point of needing to close the project. So and you're saying two weeks max? Yeah. If you could get an answer in a couple of weeks, that would be really good. You don't have any idea what that other system would cost if we didn't go through this either. No, I don't. Uh, I really don't. So and, and you, know, I, you don't know what it would save us by not going through this? That's right. And part of the reason I don't know that is we only work with the stuff that meets EPA and DNR. We, we just don't, we don't do anything else. So unfortunately, I'm not an expert at that. And that's just the honest answer. Um, we work with military-grade encryption that meets all the Homeland Security requirements and that. And that's where my experience is. Well, I meant for like these other options to get a different alarm system. Oh, down in here? Yeah. Uh, what are you looking for? Well, something that doesn't have to require all the bells and whistles, the hoops that we have to go through for these kind of costs. Well, um, really item three is, is what I think you're talking about. All it has is a high level alarm and a low level alarm in each of the For that kind of money, you can drop off two zeros for that. Not meet DNR standards. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. If they meet DNR standards for hog production and turkey production, why right. do they need them for this? Uh, good question. DNR you know down there is fact? so fragmented it's hard to tell you. <clears throat> do you know that for a fact that they won't? Um, I would say, yeah, probably. Is it 100%? No, because it depends on the review guy. And quite honestly, the reviewer that's working on this, his 18-month contract is within about two months of being over. The guy we had previously, would have probably reviewed and approved most anything we told him. This guy, not the case. And I don't know who we're going to draw next. So, unfortunately, it's supposed to be the same from person to person to person. It's not. And it's definitely not the same from department to department. And it does have to go through them as to what you're going to do. And that is also... To put an alarm system in, it has to be approved by the DNR. That's correct. And here's the other part of this. This has not been other than discuss basically with DNR that we were going to talk about this. They have not approved this. And in order for you to spend their money, your loan money, it has to be approved by them. I don't anticipate that being a problem, but that's the next thing. <coughs> if you decide, hey, we'd like to go to option number whatever, the next thing is it has to go to DNR for approval. So. But if you wait a while and forget about taking out the, the loan money, and then you could have to look at some other things, still look at the procedure, but just take it out of the sewer funds. Yeah, you could. You could. And then you would not be subject to the ARA money. You would probably still be subject to um, DNR approval, but it would be a little less a little less onerous to go through it. I mean, that is the answer. And with this number one here, you alluded to the fact that, you know, we could look down the road to uh, <clears throat> the possibility of reducing some employees like on weekends and stuff like that. Without getting that done first to go through this, we're going to put the cart before the horse, are we not? Well, you got to have this before you could... I realize that, but to get that, you know, so... You know, I, I don't know what your agreements for staffing are, <laughs> so I, I don't know that I can answer that. Um as far as on-call people, but you would have to have this in position almost certainly before you got to say, hey. But I mean, that should be, I would think that you'd want to do that. It might be something you'd like to have in, yeah, together. If we're supposed to be trying to save the city some money, right? then we better have our ducks in a row ahead of time. That's probably right. Now, keep in mind that if you told us today, let's go forth, this probably would not be online until next early next summer. Uh, mostly because we can't pull a phone line if we had to until spring. Frontier won't allow any. So you're talking about ordering equipment and 
uh, I would say it'd be May or June before you were actually online. So for, for whatever that, that makes any difference. When does golf season start? <laughs> well, I'd say by the time you get the bulldozer out there on the golf course. Yeah. What I hear, I don't think you're ready to make any recommendation at this point in time. Is that correct, Council? Okay. Darren, thank you very thank much you. for coming and explaining this to us. Thank we you. We appreciate it very much. Appreciate it very much also. Here we are on number three projects. And we are going to move to number two. Consideration of approving drawdown number 22 of SRF loan money in the amount of $8,817.50. Is there any discussion around number 3A, item 2? Move to approve drawdown number 22. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the drawdown number 22 in the amount of $8,817.50 from the SRF loan money. Senator, would you call for a vote, please? Councilman Prohart? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Houston? Yes. Brown? Yes. Perfect? Yes. Motion here. Um, <coughs> A3, consideration of approving Snyder and Associates bill in the amount of $8,817.50. Is there any? I'd like to ask, before we approve that one, okay. I'd like to ask Darren a question. Yeah. Where are we on the... Um, the actual development of the maintenance of the... The O&M? Yeah. We are about, I would call it, 80% complete. Um, waiting on some information from the mechanical contractor for the HVAC units, ironically. Mm -hmm. And I think that Dwayne had his copy today. I would say uh, we need to finish writing, and then we need to spend a little time with Dwayne and his folks again, and go through the O&M, and then it's got to go to DNR. And then... That's about the last of the things we have to do. What kind of time are you looking at? Probably two months. Two months. I would say. And DNR has to approve the O&M also. So we got to get it to DNR for them to look at. Any further questions? Ready to make a motion to approve that bill? So move to approve uh, Snyder and Associates bill of an amount of eight thousand eight hundred seventeen dollars and fifty cents. That now second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve Snyder and Associates bill of an amount of eight thousand eight hundred seventeen dollars and fifty six fifty cents. Would you call for a vote, Sandy? Councilman Hanson? Yes. Houston? Yes. Brainy? Yes. Frederick? Yes. Hart? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> item number four, citizens' opportunity to address the council on items not on the agenda. Thank you, Darren. Thank Thank you. See you later. Drive safe. If there are none, we will move on to five miscellaneous. A, consideration of canceling December 26th council meeting due to Christmas holiday. Discussion around... 5A. I'm I am too. I'd still make a move. Motion. Second. <laughs> Motion has been made and seconded to cancel the December 26th council meeting due to the Christmas holiday being a legal holiday. Is there any other discussion around it? Sandy, would you call for a vote, please? Councilman Brennan? Yes. Frederick? Yes. Frobert? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Easter? Yes. Motion carried. B, under five, consideration of going out for proposals to update the Sac City Comprehensive Plan. Discussion? I presented the RFP proposal to our friends at, um, at the P&Z uh, meeting last Monday. They made a couple, uh, just some very minor changes. One of them is that they suggested we give them a little bit more time to turn in the RFPs. And then the second one was to um, amend just a statement in it. Basically, they wanted to make sure that the entity that would get the plan would be aware that we might be interested in a marketing plan, a uh, community marketing plan. Those were the only modifications that they suggested. 
um, from the original RFP that you saw two weeks ago, but they did make a recommendation to the um, to the council that we do move forward with uh, taking RFPs back. Yeah. One thing I'd you know like to add to it is you know the document that we have the 2003 uh, plan. You know we really haven't used it as a working document. What I would perhaps like to see is more organizations and, and you know entities in, in the city, Chamber Main Street, Ministerial Association, schools, to perhaps have some input into it rather than just coming up. You know, I, I read the plan, and a lot of it was you know facts and figures. Nice to know about the city, but a lot of it did it really give us information on how to make decisions and moving forward. Whereas if I think if we involve more people or more entities in the city to contribute to it and perhaps involve <coughs> like Extension or the University of Iowa Business uh, School that put on the, uh, you know, when we came up with the priorities for the city, uh, you, you know, I'm not saying, it, it, you know, to take PNZ out of the process, but perhaps involve more uh, entities within the city to contribute to it. So if we do come up with one, it is you know truly a working document, you know not to be filed away. I don't know how many of you have you know looked at it so far. I know I really haven't paid that much attention to it. Uh, you know, and I'd certainly you know appreciate anyone else's you know, impression of this. What, what what kind of dollars, Adam, are we looking at in terms of you know a process like this? I anticipate that this. Uh, that the cost associated with this full project will be somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Any other input on this? Any other discussion or questions about this? Who do you have to go to do that? Region twelve. Well, we'll put out the RFPs that include Region Twelve. We'll likely put in an RFP. Um, I would anticipate that several engineering firms will likely put in our RFPs as well. Um, if there's no further discussion, are you ready to make a motion to move on it, or do you want to table it, or where, where are you going with this? I think Adam needs to know if you are... <coughs> Wanting to move forward? Or? <clears throat> You're welcome to take RFPs, whether you move forward with the project or not. I would say that that's a little... Uh, I don't think that that's a course of business we typically want to have, though, because you'd be asking these Region 12s and these um, engineering firms to spend a lot of time developing a proposal. Um, and then, of course, if you really had never any true intent of planning to do this, it would be unfair to all of those parties that took part. But um, but if we go ahead and, and okay to go ahead, and it comes up to forty five thousand, I mean we we don't know how much it's going to cost exactly. Correct. Until we get the proposals back, we would not know. <clears throat> That's right. And so now, I mean, it's kind of hard to make a decision not knowing the actual cost. I can, I can only think. truly give you a rough range because yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I can ask what these have cost in the past for uh, based upon the the depth of what we're requesting, and that's where I can get that price, where I have received that ten to twenty thousand dollar <laughs> price range. But honestly, until we get the packets, the RFPs back, I mean, I, I truly don't know where that number is going to sit. And if we would come in at forty thousand, you would not have to accept. Correct. Any you are not under any not obligation. In any way. Correct. We'll just, we'll just if you get back and the lowest one's thirty-five thousand dollars, you can reject all of them. They're just going to give us a bid of what it's going to cost to not have it. Yes. Is that correct? They will give us back not only a price schematic of what the project will cost, but also a proposal that will include everything that they plan on doing and cover the requirements that they're provide they're required to share under the RFP. Information about the experience of those individuals involved. It'll be pretty similar, smaller, but it'll be pretty similar to what you got as far as the street project went. And Bill's got a good point about it. You know, been planned before, and you're coming to plan something to shelf that doesn't do any good. There's no sense of coming to the follow up if you do it. Yeah, so taking Jim's comment a little further, I'd like to see more committee involvement. Uh, and
perhaps a committee set up. I'm just offering this as a suggestion to look into it further. What other <coughs> options we have? Uh, I mean, we might be able to save some money having extension do it, or U of I see what their interests are, and, and if other community entities are interested. Is there a timeline? Does it have to be? No. Are we looking at having to have it done by a certain time? No, or no. we done? can take our time and look okay. at this as much as we like. Okay. Well, I like that bill. Of looking at having some other entities look at it. Can't that be a part of the proposal? Yeah. We could invite the extension and other people to be involved. No, man, we can't. We put that part of the proposal that we're asking these firms to let us bring in other people. So there's nothing that says we can't. That's kind of a. There's, you can't, there's nothing that says yeah, you, you can't, can't not include other professional options. professional form firm will not, don't want somebody else coming in. and. If they know that we're looking at an alternative option will lose a significant amount of those that might be interested parties in this. If they think that we're trying to find an, uh, an alternative means of which to comply with, uh, to do this type of thing, um, I would be shocked how many, we might get one or two, I would suspect. <coughs> but I'd be happy to talk to the extension office and find out from Jeff Schott at uh, uh, the you and I too. That yeah, at, he, at you and I, yeah, Jeff Schott, and, um, so, ask them if there's anything that they offer from that perspective. You want to have, you want to table this issue and uh, have Adam do it. some research just, and bring it back to the council? <coughs> like Dwayne says, that 1020 could be. Okay, okay. Uh, we will table the issue and have do some more research and bring it back at the next meeting or whenever you're ready, Adam. Okay. Um, number five, we are at C, which is the second reading of ordinance number 2011-2226, entitled, An Ordinance Amending the Code of Ordinance of the City of Sac City, Iowa, by amending provisions pertaining to flood plain regulations. Any questions or discussions around that? It's pretty cut and dry because <laughs> we're uh, pretty much... Oh, I think we could handle it the you know, I don't think so? Yeah. Okay. And you might want to waive the third reading at the same time. We need a motion to approve, approve the, second the second reading I'd first. I'd move that motion. Okay, is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, approve the second reading of ordinance debt number 2011-226, amending the code provisions pertaining to floodplain regulations. Sandy, would you call for a vote? Councilman Perlhart? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Huster? Yes. Branny? Yes. Frederick? Yes. Motion here. Would you like to now also move to raise, waive the third reading? Second. Any other questions about that? Motion's been made and seconded to waive the third reading of ordinance number 2011-226, amending provisions pertaining to flood plain <coughs> regulations. Sandy, would you call for a vote, please? Councilman Frohart? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Huster? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Fred? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. 5D is consideration of resolution number 2011-20, entitled Resolution of Support on Application for Blue Zone Community by SAC Community Center. As you know, the votes and were tallied, and they gave us the go-ahead to actually apply. And this is asking for your okay to go ahead and apply to be one of those Blue Zone cities. Do you have any questions around that item? The community center is uh, in the process of uh, putting together the application along with the other parties. Um, the application is due on January 4th. Um, this would basically acknowledge our support for that application process. That's just letter of support, no financial support, just a letter of support. That is correct, yes. I'll make the motion to approve 2011-20 entitled Resolution of Support and Application for Blue Zone Community for the, by the SAC Community Center. Second. Motion's been made and, and seconded to approve the uh, Community Center to make application for the Blue Zone Community 
Alexander, would you call for a vote, please? Councilman Frederick? Yes. Provert? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Huster? Yes. Brenning? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> e. Opening and review of bids for city owned property described as Duncan Street Line south of the vacated north 10 feet thereof in the north of the center line of said Duncombe Street and line east of the east line of 17th Street and west of the west line of 16th Street, early edition of the Sac City of Sac City, Sac County, Iowa. The first vote is the compliance. <coughs> and this is from Alan Bushman and it is signed. His bid is one hundred and one dollars and one cent. One oh one oh one. Is that the only bid? Thing? That is the one and only, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we move to F. Consideration of resolution of number 2011-21 entitled resolution approving the sale of Duncan Street. Any discussion or questions? Move to approve. Second. Motion's been made and is seconded to approve the sale of Duncombe Street. Would you call for a vote, Sandra? Councilman Frohart? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Huster? Yes. Granny? Yes. Frederick? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> G. Opening and review of bids for city owned property described as Duncombe Street Line north of the vacated south 10 feet thereof and south of the center line of said Duncombe Street and line east of the east line of 17th Street and west of the west line of 16th Street, early edition of the city of Sac City, Sac County, Iowa. Okay, we have one bid, and that is from Charles Miller, and it is signed. His bid is in the amount of fifty dollars. Okay, we move on to H. And approving a consideration of resolution number 2011-22 entitled "Resolution Approving the Sale of Duncombe Street." So moved to approve. <coughs> excuse me, resolution number 2011-22 for the sale of North uh, Part of Duncombe Street. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the sale of in um, resolution number 2011-22. Would you call for a vote, please, Annie? Councilman Hanson? Yes. Houston? Yes. Lenny? Yes. Frederick? Yes. Gohart? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Five, I, update on North 5th Street project. At the last council meeting, Councilman Frohart requested an update on where we were on North 5th Street. Um, I, under your memo, you will see I, under your memo, actually expresses the information. Um, you'll see where we are as far as the <coughs> Avenue, plus you have to understand that's a little, um, um, that's a little higher than what you would expect because it includes the income donation is a value in there. Um, you will see from a total expense line where we're at. Now understand that that expense line does not include um, Richie Allen's work for concrete. I have not yet received a bill from Richie Allen, which I expect that to be a significant cost. Um, uh, one of the more significant costs of the project. So um, I'll be happy in January to give you another update of where we are, Councilman Frohart. This is what I have as far as an expense report and a revenue report for the uh, for the project so far. Okay. What's that? that? The city in kind or not, you don't have that completed in your words of another seven thousand in kind. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I would have. Okay. Um, are we Joe Mr. Poluth uh, gave me a note that he will address the council in writing at a later date when he has further information. Okay. So. Okay. Strike J. Mm -hmm. Six is public input on solid waste matters. Seven is council forum. 
Don't forget that tomorrow, uh, just in case you were interested, tomorrow is the day I'm on the schedule to be at the county supervisors meeting to present our uh, our um, suggestion of a joint agreement between our party and their party for the development of an urban development area um, immediately north and east of town. So that will take place tomorrow morning at their super regular supervisor meeting. What time is that, Adam? I believe the meeting starts at 10. I'll be about 10, 15, 10, 30, I believe, is what I'm on the issue. Is there any questions? I guess one other thing under that council form. Um, I was just curious what the, <coughs> we were looking at here for. Have you got anywhere further on any of those, you know, a continuing street project thing, you know, Adam, that we were talking about before? You had that all laid out with those. The first. ceiling system. Yeah, Bob has been working on getting that set up for, or planning to start in the spring. Um, and uh, we're determining exactly how much. There was a question whether it was going to be 20% or 25% of the community, whether we were going to roll it over four years or five years was, was the only final detail. It had a lot to do with how available the vendor was for the, for the project. Okay, if there's nothing else. So moved. So second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded to adjourn. Standing with the Council of Votes is Councilman Hanson. Yes. Mr. Yes. Ready? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Um, Pearl Hart. Also, before we leave, I'd like to